Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, each week we premiere a new movie or TV series that is debuting in Ireland and the UK uh, this upcoming month and up upcoming week, in fact. And uh, it's Valentine's weekend, we're feeling lovey-dovey in the air in terms of looking at what's coming our way now and we have a new sort of blockbuster movie coming our way on February the 17th as uh, just speaking before we went on air with our special guest she said it's a different kind of love uh, in terms of what you're going to experience it's uh, the movie is called uh, Devil's Peak it's all about a, a family sort of divided for love and attention in terms of the kingpin of the family the fatherhood desperately a power battle trying to hold on to his family members, keep them in line, keeping them raw and check. The main character who plays the father of this sort of family, this notorious family in Jackson County, is Billy Bob Thornton. And other guest, guest appearances who play his son, Hooper Penn. We've Katie Nafchon, who plays what the uh, Hooper's uh, love interest. We've Ely Haley, Emma Booth, Brian Darcy James, and our special guest this evening. You run right, remember as Ginny from Forrest Gump back in 1994, or uh, Audrey Dunn in Unbreakable in 2000, or even in the latest sci fi uh, thriller Beowulf. But she's played a role in this sort of, dare I say, this uh, thriller, this sort of sensitivity sort of thriller about a notorious family, the one and only Robin Wright. And uh, Robin, pleasure for joining us this evening. And uh, Devil's Peak, in terms of it's touching in one way, but it's Hard hitting, uh, gripping sort of adventure, and uh, how excited are you for it to be debuting not only in Ireland and the UK Friday the 17th, but also worldwide? We're so excited, A, because it's been a long three plus years all that we've endured, right? <laughs> With yeah. All the above, including not going to the theaters for, for so many years and sort of being obligated to stay home and watch streaming and where our industry like most was was very hit hard by a tsunami when when the pandemic shut everything down and no one could go to have the film sharing experience in a cinema so we're we're so excited that we get to open in the theaters first before going straight to you know VOD where you'll be able to watch it, I, I believe, on most networks. I think it'll be all over. You can get it at Amazon Prime, Hulu, Netflix, blah, blah, blah. Um, but there's nothing like going to a movie with others and feeling that energy and emotion from other people and getting the laughs at the same time. Um, and I'm just, I, I'm excited about the film. It's, it's very gripping. And I think Ben Young, the director, an Australian guy who just, he is one of the most passionate, vivacious people I've ever met. And uh, he made a on the on the edge of your seat film with this. And it is very Shakespearean, this story. It's it's kind of like uh, the Capulets and the Montagues. It's these. The enemies are fighting for who's going to have the winning position in this little town in the Appalachian Mountains in America. And uh, Robin, in terms of getting involved in this sort of project, obviously you get an awful lot of scripts uh, coming your way as a renowned actress. Uh, tell me what intrigued you about this prospect when you were you the normal talent agent sort of routine in terms of the audition process where you sought out for this role? And if you were, what made you sign on the dotted line in terms of telling, in terms of saying that I wanted to be a part of Devil's Peak? Um. I couldn't wait to work with my son, Hopper Penn, and to be able to play mother's son was just incredible. And to 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 play, I mean, she's she's a she's a meth addict, this mother. So that kind of estrangement that addiction brings to yourself you're basic you're basically estranged from everybody else because of the addiction and I thought that was going to be an incredible challenge I had never done anything like that before 
And to work with Billy Bob Thornton was just a gift. We wanted to work with each other for years. You know, we've we've known one another briefly. And when I called him and I said, would you mind playing the lead in this film? And he loved it. He said, this is one of the best scripts I've ever read. And it's a sweet little indie movie, but it could become one of those little precious gems, you know? And tell me, working uh, with Billy Bob Thornton, obviously he's sort of renowned in terms of an actor, in terms of gripping sort of roles and sort of roles uh, where most people are uh, un uh, inclined to play those sort of deadbeat sort of roles in terms of sort of being on the brink of um, sort of hating life or being on the, the low side of society. He really does toast to a T and... Uh, Really, you see an infectious sort of bubbly character offset between takes, all the sort of cracking jokes. Is he very light humor than the, the characters he normally seems to take on? He he is very much that. He is. He loves the chat, as you say there. Yeah. And he's got great stories to share and and loves just loves sharing with people. And he is so much fun and and so well versed in in this industry and so we had all of that in common you know because we're around the same age we've been in the business as long and he really took copper in it was really great i think he was without being a mentor he was mentoring him hmm. um and hopper got so much out of just witnessing his method how how does someone like that? He's such a veteran, Billy Bob Thornton. And and the minute action was called, Billy Bob's character was so scary. So when you're in a scene with someone like that that just can snap it on like a light switch, you're completely enmeshed in the scene for real, authentically. You're petrified of this character, as as you should be, but it, you didn't feel like you were acting it. Mm. And I suppose, Robin, you mentioned there about playing the character and the challenge of playing a crack addict. And uh, you said it was something new and something different for you. Did you look into maybe, I know you're a renowned actor, actress in your own right, but did you look at other previous versions of actresses who played those type of similar sort of roles? Or did you already have a sort of twist or idea in your head where what line you wanted to take uh, the role and uh, the character? Or did you look to say, well, I might take a bit of here and a bit out of this in terms of how I want to rub off that sort of feel to her? You you do do a, a bit of both. Um, where we shot was in a very similar uh, region in America um, where you could see some of those characters on the street at a bar and that's what we do as actors we're observers and then we're sponges so you do you say i i love the way that particular person who clearly was on some kind of mm. drug and I go for the physicality first. So I'm studying that and you're, you're taking mental notes of, I wanna move like that, or I, I want to be frenetic with my hands like that, or my eyes. Um, you know, that would be a completely different study when, when studying someone who is a heroin addict, where they're nodding off, or this was the antithesis of that. So I was sort of picking, what could I do physically that I was witnessing in, in a couple of people that I saw that I feel I could execute authentically, where I didn't feel like I was acting at you, but I was actually embodying that physicality. And I remember I was, finding somebody and I was like, I want to dress like her because you also, you're finding in the costume, sometimes you think, oh, I think we'll go big oversized men's t-shirts that you buy at Kmart and house slippers and that's all she wears and you're like no that doesn't look right I look like a drowned rat so I'd rather go so I kind of made her as if she used to be the hot girl in town and she had her son when she was probably 17 years old you know so yeah. she was still hanging on to the past as if she still looked that way but a completely rugged 
worn down, as we say, like a worn tire in the face because of the drugs. And uh, Robin, in terms of uh, Devil's Peak, in terms of its uh, production, in terms of its shooting, uh, you mentioned there about shooting in a rural town in America in terms of trying to get that sort of vibe in terms of uh, in terms of similarity to Jackson County in terms of where you were shooting for. In terms of from the time you started until the time you wrapped up, or is it mainly uh, two months, maybe an eight to 12 week sort of shoot? And was there uh, many sort of, uh, dare I say, uh, a good lot of offset shoot locations uh, in terms of shots? No, I think there were probably, um, I mean, I shot in one house, okay. but I think I only have like four scenes in the movie. Um, it was, it was shot in Atlanta, Georgia, and there are so many, um, of the suburbs around downtown Atlanta that could be anywhere in America. They, they don't have the desert landscape yeah. as an example, but anything, they have mountains, they have forests, they have mole hills, they have, so you can shoot the, the, the state of Georgia anywhere in America. Um, and I think there were only maybe three hard locations, three homes. So there was Billy Bob Thornton's house that he lives in with, with Hopper's character and my house and maybe a couple of others, you know, the, the auto body shop and things like that. And I suppose that uh, Robin, in terms of the, where you saw the direction of Devil's Peak and obviously when you saw the final uh, screening or the private screening for a uh, cast members in terms of the movie when you saw the finished product for the first time were you sort of excited did you start to get a goosebumps in your stomach and in, in, in terms of telling yourself yeah I'm onto something really good here this could be a real hit or do you ever really know in terms of how audience will take to a, a movie or you've been in the industry a good lot of time you obviously got vibes when you were shooting Forrest Gump for example yeah, you know, it's funny about Forrest Gump that um, I knew, we all knew, us that made it, we knew we had something special, but we knew we had something special when we were shooting it, but nobody else felt that. The people back in Hollywood who were seeing the Daily, they were like, mm, they didn't really believe in, in Forrest Gump as a film. They didn't give us very much money. And, um, and then, of course, it became one of the biggest box office smashes, you know? And then they were like, oh, that is a good movie. You don't really know, but I don't think I've been on any film in my whole career where I didn't think this has something. Otherwise, why would you invest in it, you know? Mm -hmm. But this one, of course, I, I, I think the performances are off the charts. I think everybody's wonderful in it. Um, and Billy Bob is, you know, he's one of our best. And, and and for him to have the words that he gets to say, the dialogue is so rich. It's so poetic. You know, the original title of, of the book is Where All Light Tends to Go. That's a piece of poetry to me. They had to, they had to change the title to Devil's Peak for various reasons. They just felt like it was too long of a title for people. It was going to be a mouthful. Nobody would remember it, blah, blah, blah. But there's something very spiritual in that title where all light tends to go when you think about the darkness that occurs between these two families and the control that this father needs over his son to stay in the McNeely family. It's blood. Blood is thicker than water. You know, it's that whole thing. And Robin, I'm going to take you away now from Devil's Peak to just reminisce about some of your times uh, venturing here in Ireland, stepping foot on the Emerald Island. You were telling me before we came on air that you've actually cast one or two movies here in Ireland, let alone travelling in and taking in our scenery. And what are your, some of your fondest memories of your time in Ireland, whether it be on set or off set or even sort of relaxing here in our country? The thing I remember most, which is kind of... Uh... A sweet little anecdote is when I first arrived there, I think I would, my first movie I shot there was a movie called The Playboys. And it was with me and Albert, Albert Fenney and Aidan Quinn. 
And it was a period piece, you know, back in the, the 50s, 1950s, living on the farm. And we shot that right outside Belfast. And I remember getting into the car from the airport to back to the hotel. And all the sweet driver kept saying, I just want to prepare you. The roads are terrible, you know, the terrible here. You're going to get a lot of potholes. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, we just hit a couple of little holes in the dirt road, but it was the talk of the town of just apologizing for all the potholes. And I thought that was so endearing that they thought that was bad. And I was just looking at this beauty, this majesty, and just the sweetest, most loving people. And I couldn't wait to go back when I got the second film that I shot there. And it had such a blast. The crew were fantastic. And you know, going and having a pint on the weekends. Come on. It's just that I love the way you live. <laughs> and Robin, uh, on that note, uh, summing up the good feeling here uh, this evening on the airwaves and uh, in terms of your fond memories uh, towards Ireland, you might enlighten all our audience, all our listeners, why they should come out en masse on Friday, February the 17th, why they should walk, run, cycle, get into their tractors, planes, aerobe, aeroplanes, motorcycles, scooters, head into the cinema, put their feet up on their recliner, take out their popcorn, their fizzy drink, and uh, roll back, relax, put the feet up, and uh, watch Devil Peak, and what's in store for them? Well, you know what? It's worth the potholes, doing the travel to the cinema. Uh, a, to just get a cinematic experience, and this is a ride of a movie, and, and I'm not talking about Oh, just fast cars in modern day. This is this is a battle between will the force of love of family and that kind of commitment that one should have for family, which is, you know, in many, many, many cultures, they have that. Like family sticks together, they stay together. And it's a story of freedom and redemption in the end of extricating oneself from the toxicity of that kind of control. On that note, Robin Wright, thanks for joining us uh, this evening. To summer up your role playing in the smash hit blockbuster movie, Devil's Peak, it's available across all Ireland, all across the cinemas this weekend, Friday the February 17th, featuring Billy Bob Thornton, uh, Hooper Payne, Caitlin Nakon, Ailey Haley, Emma Boot, Brian Darcy uh, and uh, Junior, and our special guest this evening, the one and only Robin Wright. Robin, a pleasure as always talking to you on the airways. We hope you come back and join us sometime soon in Ireland and see the 2020 version of the Emerald Isle. But for the moment, Robin Wright, stay safe, take care, God bless. And from me, Jim Conlon, a pleasure talking to you on the airways this evening. Thank you so much, James. It was so much fun chatting with you. Take Thank care, you. Robin. Bye.